Hi everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to talk about electric forces between point charges. Up to now we've been talking about electric forces, how they impact the motion of a single particle, but now we're going to look at uh, the, f uh, the uh, forces between two charges. Um, so you've already met the idea that unlike charges will attract and like charges will repel each other, right? So you may have also deduced by this point that the size uh, of the forces depends on uh, how, how, what the magnitude of the charges are. Like the stronger the charge is, the stronger the attraction or repulsion between, between, the, uh, between, uh, between the two charges. So what we'll find is we can write it as that force is proportional uh, to the product of the two charges Q1 and Q2, right? So Q1 times Q2 is going to be proportional to it. We're also going to say, say, this makes intuitive sense, that the closer something is, um, th then uh, like, you know, the, the, the more the attraction will be felt between, uh, or repulsion will be felt between those two charges. So we're also going to say that the force is proportional to, it turns out, 1 upon R squared. So think of not just R, but R squared. So this, is, this makes sense because um, you're going to have, uh, you know, you, you think of it as the, the, the surface area kind of uh, problem. Uh, like it's like you know dependent on r squared not on r not the distance but rather the area so r in this case and i would want to define this a little bit more explicitly r is going to be the uh, the distance between the centers between centers of two charged bodies two ch uh, two point charges so just make sure we understand that that's the distance between them not not the distance from the surfaces but the distance from the centers uh, of the of the two charged particles, so this leads us to something we call Coulomb's law, which is written as l like this: Q1 times Q2 divided by R squared. So force is proportional to the uh, to this expression. And um, when you when you uh, actually write out the equation, obviously you can see there's going to be a constant that has to go in front of it, right? So the constant of proportionality, we can express it as uh, as uh, the following, we'll call it like this, one upon four pi epsilon naught times Q1, Q2 upon R squared. And we can define this constant here, epsilon, epsilon naught, I beg your pardon, is called the permittivity of free space. Permittivity of free space. So this unit, by the way, oh, actually, and I'll write the formula here, uh, the uh, value here, I beg your pardon, is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 Coulomb squared per Newton per square meter. This unit, by the way, in some books, you're going to read it as farads per meter. You're going to read this as well, written uh, for, for, uh, for this guy. Uh, and that's okay. We're actually going to use the same thing when we get to the chapter on capacitance, but um, for now, you know, just go with it, farads per meter. The value of uh, permittivity of air is actually very close to that of uh, a vacuum. So, so if I were to write it like this, E air is going to be 1.0005 times epsilon naught. Naught here indicates vacuum. So the equation can be used as the uh, for, for the force between charges in a vacuum or in air. It's very, very uh, close. I want you to make sure you understand this relationship really only applies when you are considering point charges, right? But the charge on a spherical body can be considered to act um, at the center of that body, provided that the distance between the two bodies is considerably greater than their diameter. So if, if the distance between the bodies is much, much larger than the, di uh, than the diameter of these bodies, you can feel free to consider them as uh, point charges. So let's uh, let's work through an example on this. So let us say you have two point charges, and they're positive in this. Uh, one is positive, one is negative. So there's going to be some kind of an attractive force between these charges, and each of these charges has uh, a uh, has a uh, charge of 1.9 times 10 to the negative nine coulombs. Obviously, the negative charge here is going to have a negative. Oh. I beg your pardon, it's going to have a negative uh, sign in front of it. So what would be the force between these charges? Well, let's write out our equation. It's going to be force equals Q1, Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught 
times r squared, right? So in this case, remember, you're going to have 1.9 times to the negative 9 squared, but because one of them is negative, you're going to have to write a negative out here, right? Divided by 4 times pi, epsilon naught, so you have the, equi uh, the, the value from the, the previous page, 8.85 uh, times to the, the negative 12. The time, uh, times the the distance between these two particles. So what is it? It's 0 0.04 meters squared. So when you calculate all of that out, you're actually going to get 5.6 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons as the force between the charges. Remember, this is going to be negative here because they are uh, going to, um, you know, because of the uh, the presence of the negative sign on one of them. So that's how you would end up calculating the force between two point charges. So this is a, this is an attractive force. So this is two point charges. Could we now go even deeper than this and look at the electric field of a single point charge? Let's take a look. So let's start with the reminder that the electric field strength, which we covered in the first video of this uh, chapter, it's defined as the force per unit charge on a stationary positive point charge. So how can you now try and calculate what, you know, uh, in terms of an equation, what this means? Well, from, for a, for, from Coulomb's law, uh, we know that if you have a, um, you, you can write the equation like this. You can write Q1 times Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. You know how to do this. But remember, this is for a system of two uh, charged bodies. However, this relationship up here, it tells us that E is equal to F divided by Q, right? So let's take the example of that second charge, um, and the second charge will, will be Q2, right? Is that Does that make sense? So in a situation like this, what could we do? Well, we could do some substitution here, can't we? So the electric field strength as a result of that is going to be what? It's going to be Q1, Q2 upon 4 pi epsilon naught r squared divided by Q2. I just put this guy up here. So this is what the equation looks like. So Q2, I beg your pardon. So as a result of that, Q2 is going to cancel out. And the electric field strength is going to be simply this. So now this has become the electric uh, field strength due to the isolated, due to isolated single point charge. Isolated point charge. There's one more topic that I want you to just uh, note, and that is how this equation Remi reminds you of uh, the gravitational force equation. And here, by, by this equation, I mean the Coulomb's law equation. So our equation for the force, electric force between two charged particles, is given by this, right? If you go back to the chapter on gravitation, you're going to see something that looks like this as the equation that you saw there, right? So. You can see r squared shows up in the denominator. So the farther away you are from something, the less force there's going to be. It depends on how, you know, the, the strength depends on the some kind of a property of both objects, like whether it's mass or uh, charge. And then there's some kind of a constant um, that's in there. What is different here is there's no minus sign in the field for uh, in the equation for electric field strength. The minus sign indicates that the forces in a gravitational field are always sorry, always attractive. Gravity is always attractive. N nobody's found anti-gravity so far. Uh, but in electric uh, forces, in an electric field, may be attractive or they could be repulsive. That's one key difference between uh, electric fields and gravitational fields. Uh, and for repulsion, the sign is positive. And we've already seen that like charges uh, repel. And the product of two positives 
and two negatives are both positive, right? So like charges, if you have two positive charges, they're gonna repel. If you're gonna have two negative charges, they're gonna repel. And two negative charges multiplied by each other are still gonna end up being positive. So you can represent the repulsive force as uh, positive and the attractive force is negative. So you're gonna have some, if you go back and we ch check the example that I gave you uh, before between a positive and a negative charge, uh, the, the answer there was an, you know, something negative Newtons. Uh, so what I want you to make sure you understand is when there is attraction between two charges, they must have opposite signs. So the negative sign is gonna come in automatically when, uh, whenever, you, whenever you require it. Also, let's have a look at one more uh, thing here. So our energy, uh, I beg your pardon, see even I'm making this mistake, our electric field strength equation looks like so, doesn't it? This is what our equation looks like. So if I were to now sketch this, what do you think it's gonna look like? So if I were to sketch it like this, that you have the distance and you have electric field strength here, right? And if you have a positive charge, if you follow through with this equation, it's going to be inversely pro uh, proportional in a squared way to, uh, to, to R, right? So the equation, the, the, I beg your pardon, the curve is gonna look like this and like this. That makes sense. This, the field becomes stronger the closer you get to it. Uh, so it, it's, it's essentially like it's a potential hill that you have to climb in, uh, if you're a positive charge and need to get closer to this object, right? It, it, you ha you ha it has to be, it has to, um, it, you, you have to do more work in order to get closer to this object. If it was, and so this is an example of a positive charge. If it was a negative charge, let me try and draw the same thing again for negative charge. Uh, there's not gonna be anything at the top there. It's actually gonna look like this. So what that means, it's gonna be, if it's a positive charge approaching a negative charge, the closer it gets, the easier it becomes for, for it to get there because it's a potential uh, well. It's no longer a hill that it has to go down. So it becomes, it becomes easier and easier and easier. Um, the closer it gets, the more it'll accelerate. So that's how electric fields near a positive point charge and a positive negative point charge will look like. So let's work through one example uh, on using this equation here, and then we'll close the video at that point. So let us say you have an electron, uh, and uh, it's uh, the charge on the electron is given right there for you. So what is the electric field strength uh, 10 nanometers away from this electron? So that should be pretty straightforward. You can write out your equation now. Uh, ne negative 19 and remember you're gonna have to go make sure you put the negative sign in front of there and you've got the permittivity of free space in here and um, you can multiply this by 10 times 10 to the negative 19 I beg pardon, 9 meters squared and if you work that out it will come out to negative 1.4 times 10 to the 7 Newtons per coulomb. That's a pretty strong electric field, as you can see, right? And it makes a lot of sense because um, you, you're dealing with a very small scale here. Um, so that is that's uh, that's quite um, electric field strength the, that an electron has to deal with. Uh, I beg your pardon. That, that the electron is causing, I should say. So, folks, that brings us to the end of this video. Um, we'll end this chapter in our next video where we talk about electric potential. So I'll see you in this next video.